I have a new background. I hung a mirror and so you could see what I'm seeing out the Florida room windows. I have a new uh, protector for the uh, camera so the camera won't be on when I'm not using it. <laughs> so it's just uh, a juice cap here on this side and an applesauce cup here on the other side with some cardboard and I just hang it over the camera <laughs> um, I wanted to talk about money my one uh, my my video that had the most views was the one about living frugally and happy and healthy just on Social Security I don't think we could do that anymore I mean, I had this uh, dental emergency, which turned into a, a nine-month treatment plan, so that took a lot of my emergency savings. And my dog has kidney disease, and I have to buy this special food. Let me show you the bag. Now, this is over $80 a bag. And it's only 17.7 pounds. I know it looks big, but no, 17.6 pounds. And the main ingredients are very odd to me. Brewer's rice, chicken fat and hydrolyzed soy protein. Rice, chicken fat, and soy. The rest is a bunch of, you know, small amounts of vitamins and roots and, and uh, fish oil and, you know, stuff like that. So, recently PetSmart didn't have this. So I had to send away to New Jersey for it. So the total price of the shipping and, and the food was $94. <laughs> so, you know, all these things happening, and plus normal prices are so much higher now on groceries. It seems like everyone's gotten into the act to raise their prices. So that's why um, I've been all of a sudden looking for a job. And, I've looked for a job for a long time, a nursing job, of course, because I'm an RN. And maybe they don't want old nurses uh, because they're afraid they're going to get sick with uh, COVID. I don't know. So now, through a series of events um, and ideas I had, I'm starting to just look in the schools. Because uh, in my county, I was the coordinator for school health for almost two years so I know all the schools here and you know of course I love to be around the children and um, that interview the other day uh, I don't know it was weird <laughs> so I picked a school that I've been to before in the past now and I've applied for three jobs there and we'll see what happens uh, hopefully I'll get some interviews this week and uh, it's much happier being in schools than being in the medical profession. It's not as ethical as people would like to think, the medical profession. And all nurses aren't nice. I know they're showing very caring nurses on the television, you know, they're crying for their patients. But all nurses are not like that. They're just like any other group. There's mean ones and there's money-oriented ones. and there's clueless ones. It's just like every other type of person. Now, before I forget, I want to talk about the hopefully the end of my dental office problem. I want to show you about a week ago the records finally arrived and although the Board of Dentistry in Florida requires 
five days maximum to give the patient the record, it was almost nine weeks. Okay? Now hopefully you can see this, the footprints on the envelope So it was in the back of a UPS truck. I suppose it fell, and those big burly guys just, you know, were stepping on it. That's fine. What bothers me is they told me they would send it certified mail. That means you have to go to the post office for that. So they did ship it to my post office box. I'm, look, I'm looking at the label here. But then UPS was the one they gave it to. UPS doesn't do certified mail. They're for packages and maybe an envelope once in a while. So what UPS did was make a new label and the guy told me it's because they've delivered here before and they know where I live when they saw my name. <laughs> I this is amazing. They put the other label over the, the original label. But why, why is this dentist's office, which is supposed to be a professional business, why don't they know that UPS doesn't deliver certified mail, that you have to go to the post office? So, I mean, it's like they do everything wrong. And the worst part of this, I'll show you something else. You see the clasp here? Only one side was pointing down. And look looky here. You see that all the glue is still on there? It wasn't even sealed. So anyone could have opened it up and right on the first page is my name my birth date, and my social security number. I mean, is this crazy? I mean, it's like in a comedy movie. I don't understand this. Is this the, is this the younger generation that they just, they, they just, you know, oof, you know, do it any way you feel like it, doesn't matter. So, now what about the records? What did the records say? That dentist does wonderful, skilled work. Wonderful. But she doesn't write good notes. Neither are the notes professional. She complained about me in the notes. She says, the patient asks, capital letters, a lot of questions. <laughs> Aren't we supposed to ask questions? And then she wrote that she had to return to the exam room several times because, you know, the dental assistant said I had more questions. Now, a medical note is supposed to be about the medical visit. It's not supposed to be about the patient's personality or they asked too many questions or they didn't ask enough questions or whatever. I've never seen since the 70s, when I started nursing, I've never seen a note like that. Never. So what can I do? And they called me several times. I didn't call them back. They said they wanted to talk to me about the evaluations I've been giving them online. I said online, she's very skilled. She has a fun, friendly personality, but she does not like to give patient records out, and she doesn't like to answer questions. Now, in her notes of my record, every visit she wrote, not wrote, she typed, all of patients' questions were answered. That's not true. She still hasn't answered my question about an ingredient in the adhesive that was used several times, the one that smelled so toxic. So finally, I don't know, maybe two weeks ago, I called 3M Company 
and was asking them about the ingredients. Now, I told them, I understand you have propo proprietary ingredients that you don't want to give out your formula. formula. I know that. But can you at least tell me, not what it is, but what it not is? So the employee was very patient on the phone. I asked them, are there any stem cells in it? She told me to wait on the line. She came back. No stem cells. Then I asked her, are there any animal ingredients in it? Again, had me wait on the line. Came back. No animal ingredients. Okay, so I solved the problem. Now, why didn't the dentist figure to solve it somehow, to, you know, put, put my mind at ease? I mean, what is it with some people? They just, you know, get up and go to work and look forward to lunch and look forward to go home, and, and, and they, don't, they don't enjoy a challenge. They don't want to solve problems. They don't want to, like, think about it for even 10 minutes and try and think of some alternative ways to, to you know, help the situation. I don't get it. I mean, if I, ha if I was working and I had a problem at work, I'd be thinking about the problem, you know, all evening. I'd be wake up in the night, I'd think about it. I'd wake up the next morning and think about it. I want to solve the problem. So, back to money. It's not that I didn't take care of my teeth, but it's that in the 50s, you know, the war was over. People just want to have fun. They want their kids to be happy. You know, everyone had a job and money, you know, and so all kinds of desserts and soda and candy. Nobody was worrying about cavities. So, of course, <laughs> kids had a lot of cavities back then, and, and fillings were done, amalgam fillings. And after, if I had those fillings when I was age seven, and it's like 60 years later, approximately. I mean, 60 years is a long time to have a feeling. I mean, it, you know, it starts to develop cracks. It starts separating a little from, from the tooth surface. And, and so then around the filling, there's like, you know, uh, like a thin, cr narrow crater around the filling. So, you know, there was like six teeth that needed one or more fillings and another six teeth that needed crowns. I mean, I had one pulled out because somebody did a bad uh, root canal years ago. But, you know, how many can you pull out? You have to be able to chew. All right, so that's finished. So... You know, the lawnmower, I needed a new one. I needed a new bed. The mattress was 21 years old. Then the vacuum broke. I mean, there's always something. So I think it's good. It's good that I need to go to work for money. I mean, I don't like living alone with a dog anyway, and I love children, so... And I probably would be miserable if somebody had... Uh, given me a nursing job. I applied to test people for COVID with the health department, you know, in parking lots where they have all the cars lined up. You know, they gave me a telephone interview and then never contacted me back. So they're probably afraid I'm going to uh, get ill because of my age. I mean, on the telephone, she can't even tell that, you know, that I'm, I'm healthy and, you know, I have, I have energy and that, you know, this is what they should be thinking about underlying conditions not what my calendar years are but what my biological age is why don't they give you a questionnaire I went to one of those websites that said find out your biological age I went to several of them you know and they ask you questions like you know how how often do you exercise how many servings of vegetables you have do you drink alcohol do you smoke etc so I answered everything, and one of them said that my biological age <laughs> is 38. <laughs> so that's funny. Anyway, um, 
I, I have wrinkles. They look horrible. I know that. It took me a long time to get used to them myself. I don't even like looking in the mirror. But you get used to them. There was this uh, story I heard about a man who uh, went to the fortune teller. And um, he told her, you know, nothing has worked out in my life. Almost half my life is over. Nothing works out. Every dream didn't come true. Every plan failed. And, you know, I'm just, like, miserable all the time. So I'm here today to find out if the next half of my life is going to be better. That's why I came to you, the fortune teller. So the woman looked at him and she said, The next half of your life is going to be miserable the same way as the first half of your life but you'll get used to it. So that's the joke. And why did I tell that joke? I don't know. Anyway, uh, the first uh, school interview, they weren't friendly. They didn't ask me to take off my mask. They don't even know what I look like. Weird. So what do we do? We have to go to work. What's wrong with older people going to work? Do you know in the Bible there's no retirement? You know what the, the rules for the priests are in the Bible? When they become 50 years old, they don't retire, but they don't do the regular work they've been doing. They become supervisors. Now isn't that a good idea? The old teaching the young with all their experience and knowledge? Okay, so I'm not 50. I'm a lot older than 50. But I have energy and uh, we'll see what happens. So don't be upset if your frugal ways didn't work out because things are too overwhelming right now. Get a job. Someone will hire you, right? Some, some careers are just desperate for people. And um, it's a wonderful thing to share what's in here with younger people. We can't take it with us, I don't think. Maybe we can.